Nobody deceives like an addict. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Ali Harris saw the scene in the last photo firsthand. She actually said the words, that's exactly how that baby looked, referring to the last photo. Now it's very important that you refer to two or three additional videos. I'll put the links in the description to get exactly what I'm talking about. There are maps in those videos and there's also audio and other things in those videos. So this is going to be a short video, but you really need to go and look at those videos to get the full context of what I'm saying. At about 36 minutes, 45 seconds in Chris McDonough's interview with the Harris family on the porch, he asked Macbeth a question of seminal importance. He says, when did they take that picture? And that's a reference to the last photo. Do you know? And it's a question that is addressing to the teenager. And then as Macbeth answers, I have no idea, his mother Ellie interrupts saying the following. And this is taken from the interview room from Chris McDonough. This is the actual audio of his answer. Sure, do you know? I have no idea. I believe the one with the milk jugs was sitting right here in front of my house because that's exactly how that baby was when, before they left. So I hope Chris McDonough from the interview room doesn't mind me uh, quoting that snippet from the interview, but I will put a link to that also in the description so that you can play it yourself. The unfortunate thing with that moment is there's a dog barking in the background and you've also kind of got someone interrupting someone else. And so it's quite easy to miss that particular moment. And I want to give credit to Bria, who's a patron and also a mod, She's actually from France. She's got a really um, great uh, insight into this case and also has paid a lot of attention to it. And it's when you do that that you pick up details like this. I want to thank her for drawing my attention to this. But the the important aspect to highlight is what is actually being said there. When Ali says, I believe that one with the milk jugs was took right here, she's actually saying, I believe that photo where the milk jugs was taken right here. And she says, because that's exactly how that baby was before they left. In other words, she's saying she saw, when she saw Summer, Summer appeared to her exactly as she appeared in the last photo. And that is huge. That is a massive insight, and I'll explain why. It's, it's huge because it indicates that what Ali saw after Macbeth got out of the car was the same thing we saw, but this is the part that's crucial. It also stretches out the time that Summer was not awake. It stretches out the time that Summer was not moving. It stretches out the time that Summer was potentially unconscious. It stretches out the time that Summer was possibly injured. What's also noteworthy is the video was shot after Macbeth had left the vehicle and Candace can be heard in the video specifically saying, has she got her arm up? She still got her arm off? No. Oh, that's what I was trying to get at. Now, think about what is going on here. Candace says, as she still got her arm up and says, oh, no, that, that is what I was trying to catch. It begs the question, what is Candace trying to achieve by taking this photo? And remember, it wasn't really intended to be a video. It was intended to be a photo. So the question is, was she trying to stage a photo of Summer appearing to be fine, appearing to be sitting up, when what the video does instead is suggest things weren't fine, because she's not sitting up. And in fact, it actually seems as though she slouches further down in the video, that she actually slips further down in the seat while the video is being taken. Also, we could, we could be mistaken by assuming the worst if someone was lying against the cold milk for just a second. So in other words, if the photo had been taken just randomly somewhere in time, you might say, well, maybe it was just a moment while the car was moving, perhaps going around a corner or something, that someone would have just sort of um, fallen slightly to one side, and then at that moment th that was taken. But I don't think that is the case. Number one, I don't think they were going around a corner, and I don't think it was for just a moment. And we've got confirmation of this because we have Ellie seeing her sometime earlier. It doesn't really matter if it's 30 seconds or a minute or five minutes or half an hour. 
it's still long enough that it would make it unlikely that someone would be sleeping against cold milk jugs. And the longer that that period is, the more concerning it becomes. Some are lying against cold milk jugs with their eyes closed for any length of time suggests she wasn't asleep, she was unconscious, or worse. Now, I want you to go and have a look. I'll put the links in the description. Go and have a look at the video. Summer slipped down in backseat footage despite efforts to prop her arm. That's the one video. Also go and watch exact spot of Summer Wells swimming hole identified plus important timeline question. Now, in terms of where Grandma captured the video footage, you know, that is something that Chris McDonough asked. More specifically, he asked when it was taken. We know it was nine minutes past three exactly. And we also know exactly where it was taken. We, we absolutely know exactly where that photo was taken. Um, and I'll get to that in a moment. Now, uh, if you want to see where exactly it was, then I'll also put a link to that video in the description. And that video is titled Retracing Candace's Route Back to Ben Hill Road Plus Don's Commute Route. So I'm not sure how good your memories are of the facts as we knew them uh, months ago, almost a year ago now. But we know that the swimming hole footage occurred at 1221. And we can be certain of that because that footage was uploaded to TikTok, so it's time stamped. We know the last photo footage was taken at exactly 1509. Right, nine minutes past three, and Macbeth was dropped off, according to Ali, between two p.m. and two thirty p.m. And so, if you take the furthest, the, the latest time, let's say you say that Macbeth was actually dropped off at two thirty, the later time, then the last photo was still taken thirty-nine minutes later. That's a long time. It's a long time for Summer to be in the same position, sleeping against the milk, isn't it? If Ali is correct that Summer's position didn't change, it means she remained in an unconscious state for at least half an hour, possibly even an hour. The timestamps also suggest that Candace and Grandma were at the Harris home longer than we've been led to believe. It's either that or they were at the swimming hole longer than we've been led to believe. Which one do you think it is? So I'm not going to take it further than that in this particular episode, but I'm going to come back to something else that's quite important regarding Don and what Macbeth says about Don. So look out for that in the next couple of days. In terms of later today, I'll be doing episode 14 in the Van Gogh Letters series. And if you haven't paid any attention to any of them, you might want to pay attention to this one. It starts at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time or just after midnight on the east coast of Australia. That's also 2.30 p.m. GMT. As you can see from the infographic, we're coming to the end of 1881, which means we're about to get into the peak traffic zone in terms of Vincent's letters to Theo. From November 1881 onwards, for around four years straight, Vincent averages around five or more letters a month, month after month. That's roughly a letter per week every week for 52 weeks, multiplied by four years. If you have things like metadata and timestamps in true crime, well, all of these letters every single day retraces the exact movements and moods, almost like status, update, status updates in Vincent van Gogh's life. And that gives us a sense of exactly who he is and his state of mind. And it helps us to address this question, did he commit suicide? Was he a depressed person or was he murdered? In episode 14, we'll also examine some fascinating new insights regarding the Van Gogh family's relationship with Gauguin. And we'll look at some of the most expensive and world-famous paintings that are still missing. And we'll try to move the correspondence forward from 1881 to 1882 and 1883. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. You can also leave your thanks if you're appreciating the, com the content. Also hit the set reminder icon if you want to catch this particular live episode. So look out for that and I'll see you guys next time.